Have you ever gotten a spark of creativity and inspiration the very first moment a project for school is announced? I haven't. Uh, until now. George Lucas, he's a pretty cool guy. Went to the University of South California and graduated with bachelors in fine arts. You might know him for being a producer, screenwriter, director. Yes, Star Wars. He did fully direct four out of the six movies under Lucasfilms. Big emphasis on fully, cause he was around for two of the others, but he just helped out a bit. He even tried joining the US Air Force in 1967, but uh, got rejected from having too many speeding tickets. Yeesh. Look, I don't know a thing about driving because the moment I get behind a steering wheel, you can expect I'm not gonna get far. But stay safe on the road, y'all. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, right, did you know that the ships from the Star Wars movies didn't actually really exist? Huh? I mean, they do exist, but they weren't those big, elaborately built spaceships that you could see at your local Walt Disney or MGM studios. I know it's called Hollywood Studios now, I'm just trying to stay on topic with the time here. Let's pretend we're in the 80s slash 90s for a bit. Alright, so you're watching a Star Wars movie on your good old CRT at 4 a.m. and see the Millennium Falcon and wonder, how do they even get that all the way up to space and record all these floating things like that? miniatures. They're like these models that when you look at them, they're on screen and they look huge, but most of them are about the size of a person or even smaller. The original concept of the Millennium Falcon was being made around late 70s and looked kind of like this. You wouldn't remember this. When there was a concept sent from America to England, there was a show called Space 1999 that had a shape that looked quite familiar. The length was similar, the engine clusters were similar, the cockpit was all the way up in the front, and the- wait a minute. Oh, hold on. They didn't copy them, but don't worry, this is just a coincidence. But despite that, they decided to go for something more original, so they could stand out, you know? Editors note they ended up using it in the Rogue One movie with an entirely different ship, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Later on, George Lucas informed the modeling crew that he had an idea. Hamburger. Fish. What, what is he talking about, man? That guy Thank you, Mr. Lucas, for that amazing speech, but I'll have to break it down for y'all a little bit. The hamburger part was for how the product ended up being when it was put together, like how a burger bun has a top and a bottom bun with all like the other technology stuff in the middle. The fish part specifically is like how a sunfish swims, you know, like how it's like swims like diagonal. No, no, it swims vertically. Which of these ideas do you think made the funnel cut? Well, both of them. A little less of the sunfish though, because it could fly like vertically and horizontally. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Let's talk about that thing, yeah? The Death Star is a giant space station in the movies that poses as a threat to the galaxy. And like everything else, it's very small. The very first concept of it was super mathematically put together with a shiny finish. That didn't last long. I don't know, just looking at a sphere like that suspended in space, it doesn't seem like it would have a metallic shine as if there was a lamp about a few feet away from it. So they moved to a matte concept. It took me until recently to understand the difference between matte and shiny, so I'll explain it real quick. Have you ever been told by your parents to start up dinner in the oven and you'll have an aluminum wrap? And they'll probably tell you to make sure that the matte side is up and the shiny part is down on the pan? They're talking about that side. That's how the aluminum that's out of the aluminum wrapper, the, like, the matte part, that's kind of what the appearance of the Death Star turned out to be. And when it was done, George Lucas was known for bringing it to lots of meetings related to how the X-Wing fights were going to go down, and he would use it as a miniature Death Star model to help out with it. It was used still in the movies too, of course. The older ones. Hey, check this out. I... I see. Oh, by the way, the Lucasfilm company is broken into a few departments. Lucas Licensing, which is for the stuff you could buy at stores and other important stuff in terms of owning Star Wars. Animation department, sound department. Yeah, they do a lot more than head of metal wire with a rent for sound effects. A video game department, and the industrial light and magic department. That's where they made most of the stuff I'm talking about. What? Uh, while a lot of these models, I bet some slightly updated and are still used today, Star Wars are very well known for its use of puppets too, and I don't really mean only the face ones with the fish guys in the movies, but like, the ones that are actually meant to be people. In one of the movies, there's a scene where Lando appears out of a hatch of a ship, and it wasn't even Lando actually, it was, it was this guy. It's just a puppet. They did this sometimes for shots with smaller or faraway details that didn't exactly require an actor on set. Can't show them for too long though, cause that's not really what they're for. They're more so just to give the illusion that you're looking at a person, but you're really not. That actually sounds sort of creepy when I put it that way. You get what I mean, right?